Welcome back to another episode of Growing with the Beard. Today I want to discuss basalts. What is it? What does it do? How do you use it? Where does it even come from? So basalt actually comes from a volcano. It comes from deep down, it's a liquid magma. As it comes through the volcano and it dries out, you can turn it, it's basically an igneous rock that can be turned into a dust, kind of like a powder like this. When it gets into a fine powder form like this, it's more easily to break down into your soils versus the big large rock clusters like they're usually found in. Uh, now basalt is very high in iron and magnesium. Uh, so it will help to fix some of those heavier metal issues that you might run into in a depleted soils, kind of like an Epsom salt. Now Epsom salts are more of a mineral. Now a mineral can be broken down and sometimes water soluble versus like a rock dust powder. Uh, so this does take a little bit longer to break down than Epsom salts do. But you also got to think Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate. So yes, you are getting that magnesium to fix your soils, but it also has that sulfate, which is sulfur. You know, sulfur can drop pH in your soils, and it's very, very easy to overdo it with Epsom salts. Now, I've heard it throughout my entire life. It's just as, you know, a farmer or a gardener, everyone's like, oh, just throw some Epsom salts in there. And you really don't understand why you're using Epsom salts. So it is very easy to overdo it if you are using it more than like once a month at a time. Now, Basalts, if you are using them, you're going to use them at a dosage rate of between a quarter to a half a cup per gallon of soil that you're using. So in like a, a raised bed, it's something easily that can be mixed back into your soils. You're just going to figure out what your soil capacity is versus how much that you're going to want to use. Now, there are another misconception between basalts and azomite. Now, azomite is another form of a volcanic eruption but azomite is actually once the volcano erupts that magma has traveled into usually like an old seabed so like the only place you're going to find azomite it's mined in utah so many many millions of years ago when volcanoes were there you know the magma would fall into the actual seabed well over the years that seabed has finally evaporated so Azomite is literally taking that erupted magma, it's mixing it with the sea salt, and it's dried out and it's into like almost a sand like form. So that's why you get so many trace minerals in azomite versus basalt. So, yes, they're both created from a volcano, they're both volcanic eruption dust, so to say but they are different in how you would use them in your soils. Azomite is something I add to my garden every single year just because of the fact of all the trace minerals. Most of those trace minerals are coming from the seabed. The same way as C90. C90 is evaporated sea salt. So large, large amounts of minerals basically. All of your minerals are in that sea salt, but when added with that volcanic material, you're starting to pull in a lot more silicas. So azomite is a great product to use but I'm not talking about azomite today, we're talking about basalts and why I'm going to use basalts versus anything else. And in my applications, when I use basalts, I'm going to use that instead of Epsom salts. Now, I'm a much more of a fan of a, a basalt versus Epsom salt, and it's just because of the fact that, you know, basalt, it's just one igneous rock. It is one solid form versus using a calcium or a magnesium sulfate and the same thing with an azomite where it's more of a compounded material, a, 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 com a composite compressed material is kind of the way your azomite is. Now they both do work very well but you got to keep in mind like what am I trying to fix on say like an outdoor garden or as my plants are growing you know your basalts are always going to be used to fix magnesium, magnesium and iron. So just as a rule of thumb, you know, I, I personally like to use my azomites to replenish my soil, like I was saying, in my raised beds, as your tomatoes or whatever you're growing in there, they are going to deplete those micronutrients. So that's when I'm going to add my azomite, but as a, I would use basalts instead of, of, of Epsom salts, if that makes any sense. I, I don't know, it's just been so much easier to overdo it with an Epsom salt than versus a basalt. Basalt also takes a little bit longer to break down. So that way, you know, when you apply it, you know, plan a good month to a month and a half ahead of time by the time that magnesium is available for your plants. Well, I hope this kind of helped you understand the difference between basalts and azomites. Yes, they are both volcanic dust, rock dust, but they are 
a little bit different. You know, one was formed from malted lava that comes up and it just sits there, it dries out and you harvest it. The other one went into a seabed and it mixed with all of that ocean water and got more mineralized than the basalt does. Well, thanks for tuning in guys. Um, I will have these available soon. Um, I'm working on my packaging. As you can tell, I'm using those Ziploc bags for now. Uh, we're working on packaging. We're working on getting these things boxed up. Our website is getting close to be able to buy most of this stuff. Uh, stick with me. I would say over the next two weeks, I hope, everything will be up so you can purchase everything that we have online. You can see what we have available in store. Again, thanks for tuning in with me and uh, stick around. We'll have some more episodes to come. Thank you.